Hello everyone, this is Western New York Fly Guy. Today we're going to be tying a pattern I like to call uh, the Marabou Leech. Uh, as the name says, we're going to be needing some Marabou today. Uh, it kind of combines the best of a, a egg sucking leech and uh, just a, a Marabou fly. So, so for this fly, we're going to need some rabbit strips in purple. You're going to need one purple Marabou feather one black marabou feather, some purple crystal flash, and a chartreuse saddle hackle. Uh, you'll see why, as well as some opal white estaz. So for this fly I'm going to be using uh, a char fluorescent chartreuse thread on a size 2 hook, 3x long with a 5 millimeter cone head in chrome. So to start this fly out, we're just going to do a nice palomar down, get our scissors and nip that off of there. So the first step is going to be taking our, our rabbit strip here and measuring out how long, I got it pretty much right there, from the bend all the way to the front eye of the hook is how how far we want to go with this. So it's right about there. And we'll tie it in. Now I only do one wrap to start out with. One or two wraps. And then I'll pull it back like this. Put a nice couple of base wraps out in front. And we'll take our crystal flash here. And we'll cut it up into eight evenly long sections that we can then make uneven as we want or if we want to do that. So there's four. Fold them in half again. There's eight. So we can, you know, pull them out a little bit. So see how they're they're not all even. And you can put them right there. You can also do this right before you put the the rabbit hair on too. You can tie those in. You want to make sure they're kind of evenly spaced all around the hook. But they'll they'll space out. The reason I do it after is because when we're going to wrap this rabbit around the shank of the hook. When we wrap that, it will <clears throat> force all those crystal flesh to splay out. So now we're going to start wrapping this here. And as we wrap, we want to pull those fibers back. You want to wrap it nice and tight, but you don't want your tail to rotate. So keep it tent taut but not too taut. You want to do three or four wraps. I'll do four here. And after that fourth wrap, you want to just take that, make sure you got enough going forward, And you want to tie that in. Tie it in good and tight. Nip that off of there. Now on this particular fly, I do like to put a little bit of weight. So I'll take some 0.25 lead wire. And I'll just take a section that's maybe, you know, a couple inches long. And I'm just going to wrap this around the shank of the hook here. And you want to get the wraps nice and tight so the weight is pretty concentrated. Uh, the way I fish this fly a lot of the times is I will swing it. And I can give it a good pulsating action so it goes up and down in the water column. And fish seem to uh, respond well to that especially when the water is really muddy, which it is right now. It's been raining here for the last couple of days. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to do this pattern this week is because the water is going to be chocolate milk. 
swing and flies this week is going to be your best bet. So when the water is dirty, that's why I'm using kind of dark with contrasting colors. Next, we're going to take our Estaz. And uh, if you haven't seen how to how to wrap the Estaz, there's a, I've got a, uh, another fly tying video of just how to do an Estaz egg, which is just wrapping the Estaz up the hook. So if you're unclear on how to do that, I do better directions on how to actually wrap the Estaz in a different video. Um, so we'll Palomar that in, move our thread forward to just behind the, the eye there, and we're going to just wrap it, pull those fibers back, wrap it, pull the fibers back, and just work our way up towards the front. You can either wrap pretty closely to get a really even uh, color to it, or you can wrap with a little bit of space between the thread, uh, between each wrap on the Estes. I like to do a nice close wrap. Gives it a denser look to it. Alright, so now that we're just in front of the lead wire and just behind the eye, I'll, I'll tie this in. Cut it off. This fly not only is good for, for swinging, um, but you can tie it in a variety of colors that are natural and uh, they're like bait fish almost. So you can catch smallmouths in the summer or catch um, browns and, and salmon out of the streams in the springtime with it too and the water is real muddy uh, from the melt off. So next what we want to do, we want to take our, our marabou and on, on a lot of marabou, if it's strung, there's a lot of this kind of discoloration on some of the bottom hackles. You want to pull a lot of that off of there because it's just not what we really want. So after you do that, you should come out with a piece of marabou that has a little tag end on it. And we're just going to set that aside. We'll do the same thing on this piece of purple. You can definitely see it here how there's a discoloration and just the marabou down below at the base of the feather is just not good. So we're going to pull all that off. It happens when they manufacture it and, uh, and they, it packages funny. It's one of the downsides of buying strung marabou versus stems, but I feel like I get more out of a strung marabou pack than I do out of a stem marabou. So now we've got two marabou feathers and what we're going to do is we're going to put the purple one, we're going to tie the purple one in right at the end of that estes and you can even tie that estes down a little bit too, uh, it doesn't hurt it. And then we want to tie the black one right next to it. So you got the purple one behind and the black one in front. And then just like you would wrap a normal hackle, you're going to wrap the, the marabou. And it's a little tougher to do, but once you kind of get the feel of how to grab the feathers, you want to grab almost all the way towards the end of the tips. That way you're not holding back a lot of the material. So just like you would wrap a normal feather, wrap this forward. You want to try and make it pretty dense. Um, this is going to give it a nice flowing action in the water. I really like wrapping marabou like this because it it really accentuates the action of the fly. And right as we get up front here, we're just going to continue to let these splay out. And you're going to tie those two ends in like you would any other feather. But you don't necessarily, I don't cut mine off, almost. I almost never cut mine off. Um, just because it, it just adds to the, to the uh, action of the fly since it'll still splay out. And that'll cover down almost over the whole hook. But now, you can see on the bottom here, there's not really much marabou coming out. So you're going to take your bodkin and come in here and pull out a bunch of the fibers that got trapped underneath. There we go. 
And you can do as much or as little as you want. I always try to do a lot to get as much of the trapped marabou out as I can. The last step is to take your chartreuse saddle hackle feather and tie it in and wrap it just like you would another saddle hackle. And this just gives it a different um, color in the water. It, it kind of triggers a, the salmon or the trout to go, especially when the water is dirty. Um, and I like using these quite a bit. And I tend to do a lot of a lot of wraps to really get that that feather accentuated here. You can take your hackle pliers and and let that dangle. Pull all your fibers back to tie this feather in. Get that down there real nice, and the last step is just a whip finish. As well as you cut off, cut off your excess uh, feather there. And now you've got a fly that looks pretty ugly out of the water. But I'll tell you what, this fly on days where the water is muddy and you need just a little something extra. To get the job done, this fly can't be beat. It has a ton of movement in the water with this marabou and the, the zonker strip back there. And it's big too, so the fish are going to be able to see it. Um, it's got a nice profile in the water, and I really like using it when the water is, is, is muddy. So I stack a bunch of these in my box in various different colors, natural colors, hot colors, pink, purple, black, red, you name it. Um, and that's just, it's just a really good way to cover all your bases depending on all the water conditions. Uh, especially if you m make patterns that are emerald shiner or alewife type colors in, in white and black. Uh, when the fish are real fresh in the streams, they're targeting all that kind of stuff. So um, those work really well in the springtime, just in a different color. So hopefully you found this video uh, useful. Uh, learn a new pattern and uh, get tying at the bench. Tight lines, everyone, and I hope you guys uh, can get out and do some fishing.